Hello, Lens. Uh, just uh, first question, uh, just about the last Tour de France. Did you expect to be as, as competitive as you were and so strong? Well, I thought, yeah, I thought I'd be. I mean, there were, there were days in the Tour, or even days leading up to it, that I, I still thought I could win the Tour. Um, you know, that, that might. I mean, obviously, I, was, I wasn't right, but. Uh, you know, I felt like I felt good in training. I felt like the testing I was uh, doing in the month of June was, was uh, pointing in the right direction. And, and it's the tour, so you need lucky breaks. And you know, we got a few here and there, but um, uh, you know, Alberto was on another level, really, than anybody else in the race. So it wasn't it wasn't going to be possible in 2009. But yeah, I, I thought there were moments where I could do it. Yeah, Lance, um, a year ago, uh, the comeback was sort of a, a theory. It hadn't actually happened yet. And, and you had something to prove after years off the bike and Oregon racing. I'm just wondering, a year later, having been on the podium at the Tour, now a team built around you, um, what the hunger is like, what the mentality is like, and, uh, and where you are mentally compared to a year ago. Well, it's, it's quite a bit different. I mean, I think um, it, that reintroduction into cycling in the beginning of the year, really beginning in Australia, was uh, a bigger shock than I expected. Um, the tempo of the race, um, the positioning in the peloton, um, the, uh, the day in, day out stuff is just different. The position on the bike, a lot of things I had a hard time adjusting to. But during that time, uh, I, mean, I think a year ago, sitting here, it was just a one-year idea, one-year plan, and, and uh, I didn't uh, expect to be racing again in 2010. But through that process, despite all the, the, the rough transitions and, the, and the, you know, the rough days, it was I still enjoyed it, and I still wanted to, I said to myself, I want to do it again, and, and uh, it's no secret to anybody that, that 2009 was, was a complicated situation internally within the team for a lot of reasons, not just because of the one that most people know, but um, you know, we had an opportunity with Radio Shack to put together a team that, uh, that really provides a platform for the young guys on Trek Livestrong to, to advance into. And, uh, you know, these things came together, uh, uh, not overnight, but they came together uh, smoothly. So. You know, we'll keep going, we'll stay uh, firmly uh, embedded in cycling, and, and I'm excited. And, and the only other thing I'd say is that, um, just, I mean, maybe uh, just a slight correction, I, mean, I think the team, the, the days of this team being built around me are done. You know, I'm 38, going to be 39 of this racing season, so it'd be irresponsible for us to build a team around me. I mean, I think we have to go in as a, as a team approach, and if it's the tour, we have to look at Levi, we have to look at Cloden, we have to look at the entire team and the, and the, the tactics and the, uh, the ideas that we that we use. So, um, you know, those those days are those days are done. But uh, you know, I think we got a good, well-rounded group for all the races. Obviously, the tour is the one everybody talks about, and I think the build-up will be big. Uh, but the Spring Classics will be important, and I also think I think it's important that the team starts hard and strong in Australia. With some hopefully with some results. And Laura from Cycling News. I'd like to find out from you. A year ago, you said that uh, you were making your comeback to help the Live Strong Global Cancer Initiative, and also in a sporting dimension. Um, did you find that you had success this year in obtaining your goals on the bike and as far as your Live Strong? Yeah, I, th I think we can. We can look at it in a couple of ways. We can look at uh, the global approach, which was uh, the one that we talked about the most and the one that we worked on the most. So wherever I was racing, spending considerable amounts of time off the bike, meeting with uh, fellow nonprofits in those communities and countries, meeting with uh, leaders uh, on a political level from those, those communities and countries and areas. And then you can kind of sum it up with, with what, what went down in, in Dublin at the Global Summit. We had, you know, more than 60 countries represented, uh, 500 people, billions of dollars committed, and, and people that went back to their community and, 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 and um, uh, started programs that I think will impact lives. So, you know, on, on that level, it, it exceeded our expectations. 
Here domestically, uh, in probably the toughest economy that any nonprofit has faced in a long, long time, uh, when every day you open the paper and read about nonprofits that are laying off people or, or uh, closing the, the doors entirely, uh, the Livestrong Foundation was, you know, had our best care we've ever had. So, um, you know, certainly the comeback helped that, the exposure of Livestrong helped that, the stories that we were able to tell in Australia and Europe and America and Africa and Ireland, wherever we went, helped that, even here in the United States. So, uh, it was, it was a, um, uh, it exceeded our expectations for 2009. Yeah. <coughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing, uh, with Radio Shack, uh, we have uh, like two, three, four good American teams. There is now a new team in, uh, in England, I think Sky. It seems like, uh, you know, cycling is getting more popular in the Anglo-Saxon um, world. Even, uh, you know, the Tour of Australia is getting bigger, Tour of California moving in to May and probably making a better a better position of itself. So, wondering uh, if uh, uh, what you think about is this is uh, what I'm saying is uh, is correct or uh, and um, any comment. And another thing is uh, I see that in the team there are like 16 different nationality. There is no Italians. Is there is a, <laughs> is there is a for that or just uh, because no no good riders I think could uh, could have been in, on the team. Yeah. Well, I think the first part. I think. I agree with you. I, I think cycling is uh, becoming more global. Um, I mean, you saw the big move by Sky this year with, with big support from uh, from Rupert Murdoch and, and his his other companies. Um, you see the the American teams that have really come up. And, and I, you mentioned Tour Down Under in Australia. I don't think it's long before a big Australian multinational company decides to put together a team and, uh, and contest the Tour de France. So. You know, perhaps the sport is, is moving away from that and, and, and it's not going to be, uh, you know, three Belgian teams, three Dutch teams, and, you know, six French teams and six Spanish teams and five Italian teams anymore. But, uh, like everything in cycling, I think it's cyclical and, and most of this depends on, on sponsorship and funding and, and we've just caught it at the right time. You've got, here in the States, you've got, you know, companies like Columbia and Radio Shack and Garmin and BMC, which is... Uh, technically an American team, but uh, a Swiss company, but nonetheless, uh, and like Sky, you start to see these things, and um, you sort of, we're sort of riding this wave, despite the tough international economy. Um, with regards to the, the Italians, that you have to ask Gillen, I don't, I don't know why don't we have any <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to avoid that question. Did we, did we find one? Did we find one? That's not a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we, didn't find a lot of we didn't find an Italian one that fit in. We, after the tour, the, all, everything came late together, so all the good ones were the ones we wanted. Were on our teams already. So there is a chance. If I can follow up, uh, there is a chance uh, that uh, uh, you know you, uh, we know you like uh, Ivan a lot. Mm -hmm. and now he's on a contract until 2000, and, uh, the end of 2010, I think. There is a chance that maybe in the future he can. If you are going to pursue him to get uh, to get him on the team, we didn't we didn't think about that yet. Okay. So we're, gonna, we're gonna start to think about 2011 once the season is, is started. Okay. <laughs> but in the past, you know, 16 different nationalities—that's a lot for one team. And in the past, for example, with Discovery Channel, they wanted as many uh, as many nationalities represented as possible. And I, and I think with, with Radio Shack, I mean, it, it, that's never been part of the discussion. They just simply wanted the best team, the most talented team that we could put together. And it ended up being um, 16 nationalities. And I think, is that just riders or is that staff? No, that's only riders. So if you add staff, I mean, you're probably well north of 20. So, yeah, a lot of languages rolling around.